almost exactly a year ago today, my dog Nikita died. She was 14, so she lived a pretty long life for a big Newfoundland black lab mix. But when it finally happened, it was pretty sudden and brutal. I've been really struggling to sit down and actually record this video, um, just because it's pretty emotional for obvious reasons. So this is gonna be a little bit more of an intense video talking about that experience and trying to answer the question, how do you deal with the death of a pet? And I don't really know. I'm just still trying to figure it out for myself. I'm not over it yet. Um, but I figured that if someone is going through the same thing, maybe my experience can help a little bit. So Nikita is not the first pet or even the first dog that I lost. But with Nikita, it was totally raw. I'd been taking her to physical therapy, taking her to the vet, trying to help her get better, trying to just take care of her as she got older and weaker and trying to give her a good life. Then she, she died pretty suddenly. Uh, and it, it hit me super hard. It still hurts a lot. And so if you're going through the same thing, I feel for you. I'm gonna share some techniques that helped me heal and help me deal with it. Things that I'd learned in the past when I'd done work with grief related things, like comfort zone camp. Um, one is that pain of loss, it never goes away. It just becomes, I think, a little easier to deal with. It's a pain that becomes easier to bear as you get used to it. Whenever your mind wanders or you just go looking for it, it's under every happy memory, under every picture you have together, there is that bittersweetness now and that pain of, of loss. And it's not just pain, there's regret, there's sorrow, anger, there's all these other emotions that each take their own time and ways to get over. And it's definitely, like I said, easier now than it was at first because those first months were ridiculously hard. I saw her everywhere. The place where her bed was now was empty. It just kept kind of twisting the knife, kept reminding me that she was gone and just kept the hurt fresh. And since that's happened, there are a few things I've done which have really helped me deal with everything. And so these are the coping techniques that I wanted to talk about. The first thing was getting rid of the painful memories. I think when it comes to grief, there's good pain and bad pain. The bad pain are the things that remind you of the fact that she's not there anymore, right? The loved one that you're grieving for is no longer there. Her dog bed, her food, her water bowls, her leash, those are all things that were just reminders that she was no longer there. And getting rid of those helped heal because it stopped pricking me every time I would see them or notice them. The good pain, I think, is the healing pain, right? It's the photos, the memories, things that remind you of the good times you shared before your pet died. And it's still painful, it's still all pain, but this kind of pain is tied to things that help you more appreciate the time you did have together rather than the time that you won't have in the future. And that kind of gratitude can be really hard to feel in the moment, but I think it gets easier over time. And most of this is true for any kind of grief. I think being willing and accepting that, you know, your grief is valid, your emotions are valid. It's okay to grieve for someone you care about, even if that someone is a pet. <laughs> the next thing was talking about it. That was a really big part of my healing process, and it still is, clear, clearly. Um, her death was a pretty traumatic experience that I won't really go into uh, here, <laughs> but talking about it helped. I think even stuff like, you know, making dumb jokes, because I, I tend to use humor as a bit of a defense mechanism. Just trying to find anything even remotely humorous, which, which sounds a little ridiculous, but, you know, finding that helps. Finding a way to talk about it with people it allowed me to accept it more easily. And I think that's important because if you don't do that, your emotions are just gonna well up and it's just gonna hurt even more than it would otherwise. Because as much as you might want it to not be the case or not be true or not have happened, it has and you can't really do anything about it. And that's kind of the t you know terrible thing about it all, obviously. The third thing that I did was write 
and this might not be the right uh, method, the right coping mechanism for everyone, but I'm a writer, I've always written, and so I wrote a piece the day after she died, and it wasn't meant to be a fancy piece or anything like that. It was just meant to be... Um, I don't know, just a way to say goodbye. Because uh, because I, I had a chance to say goodbye, but but not not the way I wanted to. Um, I'm I'm not gonna read the piece that I wrote. Um, just because I don't want to break down, but. Writing that was really important to me. Writing a letter, I think, to your pet, stupid as it sounds. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's more for you, right? It's more to, to give yourself some sense of closure and start to express that gratitude. That really helped. Uh, I still go back and read it every once in a while when I miss her. And it sucks, I'm cry crying now, um, and it makes me cry <laughs> when I read it, but... But I'm glad I I'm glad I have it. It's very raw, right? I wrote it the day after she died. So, yeah. Digging into something so raw, right, when it's happening, is not an easy thing to do, and maybe isn't right for everybody. Um, but I also wrote other things. I, I, I write comics, and for a while, as she was getting worse, I was working on a new story, which was specifically about. Um, a young girl in a fantasy world doing everything she can to save her dog as it's getting sicker. So obviously it's a very thinly veiled story about my experience. The setting is fantastical, right? It's set in this awesome snowy landscape and there's magic and things like that. But the emotional core of the story is very real for me. Um, and when she died, that definitely led me to go back and work on the story some more because I was kind of getting to a really important part in the story and starting to finish it when she died and and going through that experience. Um, the, the book became even more of an outlet for me, a place to put all the emotions that I was feeling, um, all the regret and, you know, pain and, and you know, wishfulness uh, into that story so they can kind of live on and hoping that maybe my experience can can help somebody else because I think knowing that you're not going through it alone is also really really beneficial. The pain that you feel is gonna be with you and it's just there um, but I think it can push you to appreciate what you do have more. I know it's pushed me to appreciate what I do have more um, to be grateful for the time that you get with the ones you love, whether they're people or animals. And as much as my cat can be a brat sometime, uh, remembering that helps. <laughs> you have to just be really grateful and appreciative of the time that we do all get together, because life's way too short for anything else. <sighs> Thanks for watching. I hope well, I was, I was gonna say that I hope this wasn't too much of a downer, but it probably was. Um, but hopefully if you're feeling the same thing, this helped a little bit. <laughs>